So you've made it through three hours of the regular show on Terrestrial Radio, and you wanted a little bit more, so that's why you found the Gun Talk After Show podcast, where we saved all the best things that we can't say on regular radio. Now here's Tom, Michelle, and Jim for the Gun Talk After Show. All right, after show time. Michelle is here, Jim is here, and we're going to have us a good old time. Woohoo! So, how you guys feel about uh, standing out in the uh, rain and the hurricane and yelling into a microphone? I think I'm good here in Ohio. <laughs> no, no, I'm an Einstein. I'm going to go. I'm going to go drive down there just to be in it. I mean, c- come on. I mean, have we had enough of? I have to stand in the wind to show you that there's wind. I mean, really, I, and I already told you what my uh, my hope is. That we're going to put a stop to this. Some guy's going to be standing out there reporting on that, and a big piece of metal is going to come by and decapitate him no. in live TV. <laughs> no. And then they're going to go, well, maybe we shouldn't have our people out there anymore. Well, yeah, yeah, I think. But, but it gives a cameraman the chance he always wanted to be on air. So, I mean, <laughs> in the, in the grand he just goes out things. and picks up the mic. Is that what you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That that's that's cold, Jim. I'm just yeah, telling you. Yeah. Well, cold. I think both of those comments were very cold. <laughs> Not like just me. I, I, was, I was a very caring person. Uh-huh. Gosh, right? Wow. So we had the stuff. No, or you have one of those telephone poles that goes flying. You know. Well, oh, never mind. These uh, are very independent thoughts. These have no reflection upon me. <laughs> The thoughts of Jim and Tom are not, are not necessarily of a very, a very sane person. <laughs> Good gravy. <laughs> okay, it didn't take long for this thing to go sideways. And so we're done then, we're right? We're probably going to hear from the National Sheet Metal Foundation and his attorneys about... No, we're going to bill them for the, uh, for the advertising, <laughs> so it's okay. It's all good. You know, it's, uh, well, I once heard of some media outlet, I can't remember who it was, and they would like just send invoices out to people for their ads. They never ran any ads for them. Oh, nice. And they said, you know, not everybody paid, but, you know, 20% would. It just automatically goes to accounts payable. They would just yep. you know, pay it. Yeah, I actually worked for a loser back in the day that would. Uh, Wait, was this like, we're not talking about me? No, no, no. Different. Oh, okay. Totally okay. different loser. A different loser. Yeah. Okay. Good now, this, this guy would bill, and his orders to me, which was the final last draw for me, was as soon as that check comes in the mail, you mark it paid and you re-invoice them. Because that stuff will cross in the mail sometimes, and every once in a while, this company, they, these couple companies, they will pay it a second time. Oh, my I'm God. Going, <laughs> gotta go. Low life. I'm out of here. See ya. Yeah, I don't want to be a part of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. So, Michelle, you had a good day. I did have a good day. I didn't even bring the topic up. How about that for once? How about that? People are calling and talking about the 327 Federal Michelle. Yeah, I know. Four dozen we, roses delivered and three marriage proposals out of the deal. We just called the Michelle load today, you know. Holy cow. Yeah, my radio call name, 327 Michelle. There you go. <laughs> it's Rubber Ducky. How about you, 327? <laughs> You having a little bit of one of those flashback moments, are you, Jim? Yeah, a little, <laughs> little bit of, uh, was it C.W. McCall? C.W. McCall. We got ourselves a convoy. Yeah. Ooh, Do you know who that guy was? Flashback. No. He took the money from that song, and he rolled it over and, and started Mannheim Steamroller. Cliff Davis. No. He's really? Cliff Davis with C.W. McCall, yeah. Really? Well, I mean, check I mean, me on it. I just made I'm, it up, but check me on it. You probably yeah, won't, and everybody will think I know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> Chip Davis is his name. Get your story straight. Tom's checking. They're Tom's I, checking right I, now. I, do you want to know how much I care? <laughs> He's not checking. No, no. I'm sorry. You, you've interrupted my solitaire game here. Yeah, what are you doing? And I want to tell you how this all segues into guns. Okay. Well, I wish you would. Yeah, I've got to come up with something here quick. You guys carry it for a while. I'll think. <laughs> yeah, right, so, okay. You know what you are, dude? You're a curse. Yeah, I am. <laughs> You're short. A little short. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of fries short of a Happy Meal. Yeah, that's it. Nine millimeter curves. What are you, who are you calling short, dude? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we had a lady call in with her nine millimeter curves. She thought was a trying to get nine millimeter Luger into it. Mm-hmm. You really have to hammer on the back of the slide to get it to close when you do that. Yeah, well. That's a pretty common mistake, though, I have to tell you, on the retail side of things. I, I would think so. It's confusing. Mm-hmm. Yep. But, but don't you find that caliber names are confusing to a lot of people? Oh, Absolutely. You know, they come in and, and and it's just, you know, you've got numbers going on in your head. Like, I need some thirty eight ammo. Okay, mm-hmm. what are you looking for? And then it ends up not being a thirty eight, it ends up being a, a three eighty or you know uh, it, it, it just simple things. Well, well, zero. Okay. Um, imagine zero. somebody comes but, in and says, I need uh, am I need seven millimeter ammo. Right. And you're going, well, um, what, what kind of seven millimeter? Rem mag, well, uh, you got well, Mauser? I, I, no, I, I want a seven millimeter magnum. 
Okay. <laughs> now we we still got down. like five <laughs> choices there somewhere. Right. You know. It gets very uh, confusing. People don't realize how many different calibers there are out there. Well, that's because they don't have a gun for each one of them like we do. <laughs> <laughs> and by we, you mean you? <laughs> well, there's that. Yes. There's that. You know, strange, it's great strange inheritance. Is. Yes. Probably one of the most expensive mentors we could come across was Tom. You realize Tom? that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moi? Oh. I learned a lot, but my house weighs 400 pounds more, and it's all steal. You put a yeah. safe in each corner. <laughs> well, that's, that's what we do for hurricane protection. We just weight it down. Right. Hey. We put gun safes everywhere. <laughs> what an idea. Mm-hmm. That's right. I wonder if I could get insurance to pay for that. Probably sure. second floor. That's the problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of these folks, and we, and we were talking about it off the air, but the uh, National Weather Service will say, okay, the... Storm surge is going to go out like three feet down in storm surge before it comes up, and then it's going to go up ten feet ten. over normal. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I can just tell you, you look at the room where you are, and look ten feet, it takes you to the ceiling. And if you're in the house, there's nowhere to go but maybe in the attic if you're lucky. And as we discovered in Katrina, they found people in the attics weeks later. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, and they actually told people said you need to store an axe in your attic. For those reasons. Oh, man. Or, you know what? When they tell you a week ahead of time that this big <laughs> sucker is coming, you oh. might want to just head north. You know, get out of wow, there. Wow, there's an idea. Well, I think the worst. Leave when you know there's danger. Well, what they're reporting is the worst case scenario where they thought it was going to hit, obviously, on the East Coast and it's mm-hmm. coming up the West like it was initially right. thought would happen. And people went from the. East to the east west. East to the west, yeah. That's oh. right. You know, and then they got, uh, my buddy was flying uh, in the Atlantic area. He said over the interstate, the interstate was chock-a-block full of people driving out of Florida. Yeah. I was out yesterday on the interstate here, and I am just north of New Orleans. There's a cut-through interstate called uh, I-12 here. Mm-hmm. It's a little cut-through on I-10. And I passed one convoy of had to be 20 bucket trucks. Wow. Going toward Florida, and what they're doing is they're they're done with Harvey, and now they're going to Florida. And then later on, and this one was weird. There was a convoy of about ten border patrol trucks headed toward Florida. Wow! And I don't know that they're there like to round people up, but probably just a case of let's have more law enforcement, more manpower, support, yeah. more power for everything. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. I I know that they put out the Ohio National Guard. I those guys are. In route right now. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I know like with our local um, chapter of Edison, they have like four or five crews going out and right. and first responders as much as they can help are, are reaching out. But I know that they were putting out a holler for some nurses like they needed over a thousand nurses. Oh. And I mean, it, it's it's catastrophic, obviously. The- One of the things that yeah, here's the thought. You know, I know a lot of folks who listen to this do volunteer. They do show up at things. Mm-hmm. What if we always wore like. A Second Amendment type hat. I was just thinking we should make ourselves shown as, as an outreach thing to say yeah. we are. These are the good guys. We're the ones in your neighborhood. We are the gun people, but we're also showing up to, you know, get people out of the nursing homes and take care of the kids and do all the things that we do anyway. We just don't get credit for it. Mm-hmm. Ooh, arms for the cause. There you go. Dot com. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> it stands for all kinds of things, right? Yeah, saw, and, and, and and our logo could be Venus de Milo. <laughs> a call to arms, please. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was just terrible. I saw a great meme about uh, Hurricane Irma. It was a uh, picture of the Florida interstate, and both in all three, four lanes of traffic were dead stopped. Thousands of cars for miles. One car coming the opposite direction, and the caption was, "I forgot my cell charger." No, stop it! <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Which just kind of ties into Tom's thing about you. Know, I'm sticking around. It's, it's going to be all right. So, uh, uh, come on, really? It's, uh, mm. All right, let's take a quick break here. We come back. We'll actually talk about gun stuff because I got a couple of things we want to talk about: of uh, guns, ammo, holsters, and belts, and other ways to carry guns. Built to perform in the harshest conditions, the Ruger American pistol can take it all, from ice to dust and everything in between. 
The Ruger American pistol features a short take-up trigger, Novak sights, and a recoil-reducing barrel cam with low mass slide for reduced felt recoil. Plus, a modular grip system with three sizes to fit almost any hand. Check it out at Ruger.com. The Ruger American pistol, because anything else would be un-American. You got your carry permit, and that's good. But you know you could use more training. Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Bata Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShotgunTalk.com. That's ShotgunTalk.com. Uh, as much as I, uh, I do like the idea of just putting a rope through the trigger guard and putting it around your neck and wearing your gun as a necklace, <laughs> just, uh, yeah, because it's always right there. And I mean, you're not going to forget where you put it because it's banging a big bruise in the middle of your yeah. chest. Does it matter if it's where it's at in the trigger guard or through the trigger? It doesn't really matter, does it? Well, ooh, how fast a draw would that be? If all you had to do was just take the gun and Push shove it. it out in front of you and it would go off. Right. I'll get on that. <sighs> what could go wrong? Well, I mean, if, if, okay, so jogging might end up being a little bit problematic. Well, if it's a semi-auto, it's bouncing it would, around, you know, yeah. if it's a bolt action or something, you don't want to do that. Yeah, so that's, that's why we have the revolvers. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Michelle, <laughs> you, 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 can, you can just dive in here anytime you want. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm thinking I'm good. I might just leave. <laughs> Is she inching over toward the door? Yeah, the association with today's program is kind of touchy today. (laughs) Smart girl. (laughs) So, to Rick, I'll see you soon on the range. (laughs) No, I've seen your husband shoot. I know. Rick, not a good move. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Shoot. But uh, I will tell you, that Henry sounds like such oh, a fun little rifle. Plus, it's got the big loop on it. And... Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a Walter Mitty thing. It's just a fun <laughs> thing for us to play. Yeah. Right. We all want to be John Wayne. But, I mean, it is a reasonable gun, especially for our part of the country. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get a 300-yard deer shot around here. No. Well, you, you do if you just sit there out there on the road and wait for him. Right. Well, I get a 100-yard shot, and then I run the opposite way 200 yards. <laughs> Ooh, I, yeah. I like it. It's a little different. You know, it's... One way to go. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep, yep. It's a, you're, uh, you got a little two-wheel range stretcher, do you? <laughs> <laughs> pedal, 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 pedal. No, you know, I did I just on my scope. I just took some uh, nail polish, and it says 100. I made it three. Nice. Oh, my goodness. 300-yard shot. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> and, and you always take the, uh, you look through the wrong end of the binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> no, the problem is, is he Man, really has nail polish. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm in touch. That's right. Yeah. Now, did you say you were touched? Yes, a little oh, tad, just a tad Just touch. a tad. And touched, as you like to say. Touched. Just, just touched. Okay, so uh, I did like uh, having a revolver guy on. That was fun. Mm-hmm. That and the was fun cool. part was he's he was special forces dude. He was like one of those contractor special forces guys, probably a never handle a revolver. Yeah. And gets out and he discovers them. He kind of gets the bug and starts his exploration of them all. That was fun. To me, it's kind of like turntables. There's a resurgence in turntables in the past five, ten years. Because they totally went away. You, you right. couldn't, couldn't find one hardly anywhere. Oh, yeah. And you find vinyl everywhere. Yeah. You find vinyl again and stuff. And just there's certain things that are just cool. Well, you know what we've got to do? we got to get ahead of the 8-track curve. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, we, we could be on the leading edge of that. Yeah. I always loved about 8-tracks. You could hear the song you wanted to plus a little bit of the other ones. Well, yeah, but that's why you uh, had a matchbook that you right. shoved underneath it, and you wiggle that thing up and down until it stopped playing, you know, the other side backwards. Yeah, you know, it's like manual Paul is head dead alignment or something, you know. That was the coolest thing when the Pontiac Le Mans that my dad had showed up with one of those. Oh man, it was awesome. Pontiac Le Mans. We had a a, a Buick Electra two twenty five, or as it was known, a Deuce, Deuce and a quarter. quarter. Yep. That's right. My brother took it to the racetrack and burned the motor out. Nice, yeah. <laughs> of, of the big family luxury car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We, we rented a car once and took it to a local uh, road race course, and they wouldn't let us come back a second time. They said, you guys are driving way too crazy, and you don't respect the car, and blah, blah, blah. I said, it's a rental car, and I had insurance on it. Well, what are you going to do if it cracks up? 
I'm going to call two tow truck drivers. <laughs> well, why are you going to call two tow truck drivers? I'm going to call the first one to tow me off the track and drop me in that field over there. I'll call the second <laughs> one to come get the car. <laughs> so we weren't allowed back. No. But we ran okay. well. <laughs> so, so we're uh, at a family gathering last night, and one of the uh, ladies there, mother of three, and we're, somehow the conversation got around to a local racetrack. She says, I would love to do that. I said, what? Oh, yeah. I love to drive fast. I would, I would love to go. Can I, can I take lessons? Can I drive fast? I'm thinking, where did this come from? <laughs> that was really interesting. <laughs> I'm thinking, I got to get her out shooting. Because if you know what, if you like that, you probably would like shooting also. Yeah, there's an adrenaline thing. I think that kind of goes oh, yeah. with both of them. Yeah, don't you think? Yeah, well, I, I think you should combine the two. Really, well, I speak yeah, drive by. Uh, Some people do dri- that. Instead of a driving <laughs> class, it's a drive-by class. Right. <laughs> drive-by education cars throughout the town with little well, you know, lights you, on them. You know, you can go to places and do the training, and you can shoot uh, out of helicopters. Mm-hmm. Now I want a hog hunt out of a helicopter. Well, yeah. Oh. You and Nugent. Yeah, I got to call him. Come on, yeah. Ted. Yeah. My birthday's coming up. It's in Texas, June, man. but still. You can, it's you coming. You can go down to Texas. You can do the, there's a, Heli Hogs is the name of the outfit. Yeah, that's got to be, what, $1,500 yeah, Heli Hogs. day You probably. can go do that and uh, just. Chump change. You know, whack oh, them and stack them. Yeah, that's 100 bucks. Probably no more than that. <laughs> it's got to be, what, $1,500 a day? Could be more. I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. Uh, of course, they're using the Robinson R44s uh, helicopters, and those are not as expensive to run as the turbine-powered ones. That's a piston-powered okay. uh, helicopter. Oh, everybody knew that. Yeah, I'm I'm a, a, ma- made in Torrance, California. Oh, <laughs> got family there. Taco Bell's there. Really? Taco Bell's there where they do not make policy for their individual oh, franchises. Oh, that's right. So it brings us around finally to guns. <laughs> See? Uh, <laughs> I knew you had it in you. <laughs> we were wandering in the desert there. <laughs> of all people that saved us, it was Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. I'm, I'm, I feel so ashamed. I'm just, uh, well, that's, that's a new low. Oh, okay, so talk, talk about the policy, the Taco Bell policy, Jim. Well, Taco Bell's got a thing where, and it's similar to most franchises, but they've got a thing where if it's a corporate store, they're not real thrilled with you carrying as an employee, like, at all. But if you are a privately owned franchise, you set the policy for your employees and yourself, et cetera, as well as your customers. You can put and a that's no what gun, happened no in Cleveland? Stuff. And that's what happened in Cleveland, yeah. So that, that owner either didn't have a policy or had a pro-gun policy, and now he's got uh, five employees that are alive today because mm-hmm. of his prudent move. For those who don't know what we're talking about, the story last week of uh, two armed robbers come into a Taco Bell at like 2.30 in the morning. It's one of those 24-hour places. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're wearing masks. They have guns. They order all the employees on the floor. There are five employees there. And three of the five employees pull out their guns and shoot these guys, kill one of them, and I don't know what happened. One got off. He got away. I don't know if they caught him since. He he, he ran off. He used his head. Yep, and uh, Taco Bell says, "Hey, well, we don't have a policy for our franchise, you know, privately owned franchise." And from what I read, at least so far, the police are saying, "Hey, it looks like a good defensive shoot." Yeah, well, that's the other cool thing. I thought that it was pretty smart on on Taco Bell's uh, main corporate office to not give their gun policy. They weren't asked yes. that; they just asked what you know what's going on, and they said, "Oh, the individual store," and they kind of deflected it, and they, yeah, didn't, they set they, their own policy, and yeah, and that's slick. I'm not sure if that was a lawyer guy who's move or a PR guy, but either way, that was slick. There's no reason to bring up. Because so many times people, especially in court, you're asked a question, you volunteer information that takes them somewhere totally different. It's like, yeah. short and sweet, a- get out. Answer the question that was asked and nothing more. Don't add anything to it. Use the fewest number of words possible. Yep. <laughs> fewest number of words possible. <laughs> well, and as I always say, my lawyer buddies always tell me, anytime you start off with, but I can explain, <laughs> you're already in trouble. <laughs> It's just, it's time to be quiet. Yep. Call your lawyer buddy. Yeah, so good on the franchise owner and yeah. uh, great on those employees. And I bet you those two unarmed employees are probably pretty thankful right about now. Yeah. I tell you what, let's take another about a one-minute break or so. I'm going to come back and I'm going to tell you about a machine gun you can get for 299 bucks. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Dealio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. 
with Gun Dealio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Dealio. Made in America. Gluten-free. At the App Store and Google Play or GunDealio.com. All right, yeah, okay, I teased it. I'll throw it out there. Uh, it's an MP40. Now, a real MP40 is going to run you about mm, 15 to 20 grand. Mm-hmm. But this is a full auto air gun MP40. Ooh. It is so cool. Look at it. It is so much fun. What's it shoot? Uh, PB, BBs. It's BBs, okay. Because yeah, I'm like BBs. Just pellets and darts and all that. There you go. BBs. <laughs> That was a full auto BB gun. Did Just you ever shoot, shoot darts out of your BB gun when you were a kid? I never did. I saw the ads that you could do that. Yeah, I had them. I just I yeah. hit, never hit anything with them. They didn't fly true at all. BBs, BBs are kind of like knuckleballs, right? But they kind of have a well, they're pretty, relatively I mean, tra- good, up, good trajectory. Up to 10, 10 to 15 feet, they're pretty accurate. Yeah, and they have the, who does that? A 4-H, isn't it? Michelle does the National BB Gun Championship. Oh, I don't know if it's 4-H or not. I think it's 4-H, yeah. I think 4-H, this will surprise you, has the largest youth shooting program in the country. Well, that actually kind of makes sense. You think about yeah, it. That's pretty cool. No, I didn't do the darts, but what I did do is I made darts, uh, and we would go get a four- or five-foot length of conduit, and we would take a coat hanger and cut about a six-inch piece out of it straight, sharpen one end, and then put a cotton ball on the other, <laughs> wrap it around with string, and we would make this six-inch long dart that we would slide in there. And when you got a big lung full of air, you could drive that thing right into a telephone pole. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you got in trouble for shooting a Dodge dart once. But... <laughs> well, who would know? Give who me a notice? switch, son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Wow, oh, air who? darts. Tom yeah. Blowgun. Blowgun. Gun. That's right. She hey, slingshots. Yes, Blowgun talk. We could have Blowgun talk. Talk all about, you know, be awesome. Careful. Might be hard to get a little sponsorship. Might be a little tough, yeah. Let me, let me, let me think this through here a little bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, you have sons. A son, yes. A son. A mm-hmm. son. Mm-hmm. And a young son growing up must have gotten into things like this. Mm. Or, you know, or the statute of limitations may not be out. He may not have told you about him yet. <laughs> right? I may not know about it. Dear That's Mom, right. there was this once. <laughs> we get that all the time. When we, Ryan starts telling us about a story. We're going, No. What? No, what? I don't ever <laughs> oh, remember yeah. that. Oh, yeah, you weren't there. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah no, I, I, I wouldn't even tell you. <laughs> she did what? <laughs> it happens now. My mom says, I, I really don't want to know, Jimmy. Just, I, I, there's no need right at this point. Jimmy. Yeah. A, 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 a late, late night, night break in into LSU's Tiger Stadium and running around on the field. Oh. Uh, really? He did what? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You know. <laughs> was he, I hope he was clothed or something. He nope. wasn't streaking or anything, was he? We'll move on. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I wasn't there. I have only heard stories. Oh, but, boy. I got some leverage on them now. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll pretend that never happened. <laughs> well, just between the three of us, okay? <laughs> and both our listeners. <laughs> yeah, right. It's grand total of five. I don't know. No guns were involved and nobody got hurt, so it's all good. All so good. So I worry about it. So, Okay, so I'm thinking that um, we're going to – I bet we see more revolvers being introduced. Well, I just, Kimber, I just told you the story about Tom off air. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Tom yeah. Hennig, our, uh, our Kimber micro king, mm-hmm. um, he uh, called Kimber because he had a magazine issue. You know what? Better yet, let Tom tell you. Hey, Tom, take the mic. Hey, Tom, come over here and take the mic. Hey there. Hey, take Tom. my mic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you, th- <laughs> Thank you Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really have a story. I just wanted to get him off the microphone. <laughs> Thank you. God, that worked. What, what took us so long to figure that out, Michelle? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah, I, I needed to call Kimber about that magazine issue we talked about. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you go to their website, boop, first thing pops up is an ad, and it's got 
uh, three revolvers mm. that they've just come out with. And they're so, nice looking revolvers. They are, they, yeah. They feel sturdy and solid. You know, I, I like them. Yeah, I think the biggest one of that trio is a three inch barrel. I think that's right. Yeah. I haven't looked. But yeah, that's kind of cool looking. And yeah, we, we have a lot of different, you know. So, well, Tom, the question is did you go ahead and just well, order one of the revolvers while you were there? Uh, no, no, no. But <laughs> so I did order a holster work. today. Oh? Yes. For the, your Kimber? For the Kimber, yeah. Okay, what kind? Uh, alien gear, their uh, cloak 3.0. Uh, yep, yep, yep. The You're going to find that to be very comfortable. That's a nice, nice design. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, I think you're going to like that a lot. I'm it's, sure I'm uh, probably going to get sick of it digging in my side, and then I'll try and get an appendix carry, and I'll get sick of that poking me in the groin, and then I'll try something else <laughs> outside the waistband in the colder months. And You've been talking to Michelle. And I'm going to be, you. yeah, <laughs> that drawer full of holsters that you always talk about. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah. you get calluses. <laughs> you oh, get, doesn't that you sound get, attractive? You get, you get wear spots. It's okay. <laughs> Or, or if you're in the south in the summer, you get heat rash at that spot. Oh, so. oh lovely. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for that. This is why uh, leather is sometimes better than Kydex. <laughs> at least it breathes slightly. <laughs> it's yeah. uh, it's you know, tough. It, it, well, and it's, it sounds weird, but it is one of the reasons we end up with different kinds of holsters because sometimes one, for whatever reason, just starts to bother you. It's a, it starts to hurt your back, or it's a wear spot or something. You try a different one. It's just a little bit different pressure point. Just switch uh, it up for a little while. Yeah, exactly. You do. So, I don't know. It's just um, it's like I was looking at that leather holster I've got for that revolver. I will tell you that the, the outside the waistband holster, is to me, is so much more comfortable than an IWB. Oh, yeah, it just I'm doesn't sure. dig into you at all. But you know, obviously, then you have to have a cover garment that is long enough to go over that. So that's why I've started doing the whole moo moo thing. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make you seem suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, it, it makes people kind of get away from you, so you don't have any weird encounters that way. That, that, I don't know. I wouldn't go around that guy. That's a great name for a musical group. You know, the toughest part of being in a, in a group is coming up with a name, right? Okay, so what's the name? Inside the Waste or Outside the Waste. (laughs) Please welcome the Outside the Waste Band. (laughs) You've heard of the one-hit wonders? That's a no-hit wonder. I'd like to say I'm all here all week, but I'm I'm all. But you probably won't be. I'm gone. Tom, can you get that mic? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, who let him back on the mic anyway? I think he just reached up and grabbed it. Wilkers. Man. He acts like it's his studio or something. Holy cow. Right? (laughs) That's hmm. it. So, hmm. Michelle, what's your family been doing? You guys shooting? What's going on? Oh, a little bit of shooting, yeah. Um, I don't know, just all kinds of things. Trying to get uh, make sure some family members are secured home from Florida. That happened. Ah. That was that was a good situation. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you, you hear these stories about the gas and the one to three mile an hour situation. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that was definitely the case. So, you know, some... Some concern, but like yep. I said, people are home. That's the good, good. part. And yep. uh, I, I think just keeping up with things. Hunting seasons are coming, and they are. cooler weather is upon us, so I'm getting ready. Yeah, I walked out the other day. It was cooler. I'm going, yeah, fall's not here, but it's just around the corner. The worst part is I just have to wonder, because we've been having cooler temperatures up here, if mm-hmm. uh, that's going to met with, mess with our rut. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But I don't know. I, I would tell. say just, you know, always be loaded, have that gun ready in your lap as you drive around. If you see a deer, you know what to do. No, that's Jim's <laughs> hunting style. That's not the way that we do it. When is blowgun season in Ohio? <laughs> Well, it's, and you don't need a silencer either. You know, oh. The worst part is if you breathe back. <laughs> you have to be completely away from. It is a self-correcting problem, I can tell you that. You know what? On second thought, Jim, cancel I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Inhale well, I, deeply. <laughs> that's right. Take a deep breath. Oh. All right. So I'm, I'm waiting for my 308 to arrive. Uh, I'm getting a, a Nosler. 308 rifle for my mule deer hunt out in uh, Idaho. We're going on a, a fun hunt with some buddies, and so I, now I got to get it rigged up with a scope and do the whole, you know, all the rest of the things that happen. So I'm 
that'll be fun. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it because it's kind of full circle. Uh, I shot my first deer with a 308, and I'm trying to remember. I may not have shot a deer with a 308 since then. Hmm. So that'd be fun. We just set somebody up from the uh, local area here with one of the Gunsight Ruger 308s for hog hunting. Oh, the uh, Scout Rifle? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's just a nice rig. Small brush gun, easy to mm-hmm. maneuver, but still got some heft for recoil. Yep. I'm waiting for my nephew to get stationed up in Fairbanks so I have an open invitation to go elk hunting up there. Oh, yeah. Or you won't. Uh, well, there are no elk, elk around moose. Fairbanks. Moose. moose. There are moose there. Oh. Now, there are there are elk in Alaska, but you have to go down to, now, unless they've transplanted them since I was there, but uh, you can go down to Kodiak, or actually I was hunting on Raspberry Island for elk when I was there. Hmm. Uh, and where is that? That Raspberry Island is just off of Kodiak Island, which is down the Aleutian uh, Peninsula. It's a long, long way from Fairbanks. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Alaska is a big, big old state. You may not have heard that, but <laughs> now there are elk lodges, but they kind of frown on hunting. Uh, yeah. the elk lodges. That's, that's yeah. a whole different deal. Yeah, <laughs> but yes, they have they have moose and uh, bear. The deer. The, it's interesting. The only deer they have in Alaska, mm-hmm. as I remember, is sick of blacktail, and they were down in that same area. I ended up not getting an elk there, but I did shoot a sick of blacktail. Uh, because we need meat because the plane couldn't come in and get us because the weather had come up and was blowing, I don't know, 50, 60 miles an hour for a week. And uh, so the boats mm. couldn't come in, the plane couldn't come in, and we were getting low on meat. So you so, really did depend on getting that shot. Yeah, I, I shot a 100-pound uh, stick of blacktail with a 375 H&H. It's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. And it worked. It was dead, right? No such it thing as overkill, I've heard very, of Very, very dead. Dead is dead. That's what he yeah. says, right? And it was also <laughs> delicious. Now, what about what caribou? Uh, yes, you would have caribou in the Fairbanks area. So, yes, you could absolutely hunt uh, caribou. Those are yeah, Santa's deer. <laughs> oh. Well, if you see one with a red nose, don't shoot that one, okay? My goodness. <laughs> What is wrong with my coworkers today? <laughs> oh, let me count the ways. <laughs> well, let me see. We went through Jim. <laughs> we went through the decapitation. <laughs> is that a red nose or is that the laser? Oh. <laughs> no. Caribou are fun to hunt, though. Uh, but just remember, when you're hunting caribou, you're always, well, in Alaska, if it's not paved, or in grizzly country. Mm. So there is that. So you, sometimes you carry a little bit more gun for caribou than it would actually take to kill a caribou. Mm, yeah. Because there's that other element possible there. So nutria lives uh, matter. Nutria? Nutria. Remember the nutria education you gave us? I probably I don't have a lot of those in the, Alaska. I do know a lot about nutria. More than I really care to know. <laughs> We've got this 25-pound rat, and they're running all over our state. You know where else they are? It's in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, they've got them up around Portland and uh, Seattle. Area. But not as far as Alaska, correct? Not unless you want to take a couple of them up there and start something. Play, I just happen to have a few with me. We're heading out to the t- bar. but Take two up there and play some mood music and just see what happens. Are you going to take the ferry, or how would you go? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Probably with the music. Let's stick with the music. Probably, uh, what, Blue Bayou would be a good uh, starting tune, maybe. <laughs> or Born on the Bayou, a little bit of CCR there. <laughs> Born on the Bayou. Set the mood, you know. <laughs> For Nutria. For those who don't know, a nutria is a, a beaver with a PR problem. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm tapping out. I'm done. <laughs> See y'all next week. <laughs> don't go, Michelle. We'll miss you. All right. Well, I think we have uh, circled the wagons, and uh, we have headed for the exit at this point. So we beat, beat a dead nutria. <laughs> hmm. To mix our metaphors. Right. Exactly. That's right. All right. Well, I'm off to uh, check on uh, what's going on with Irma. We may be doing some missions down there. We'll just, I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, there going to be an awful lot of people who are going to need a lot of help. And so I would just ask, seriously, uh, if anybody can help, if you have a truck, if you would like to volunteer, uh, on go on Facebook, Operation Airdrop. We're doing a thing there, and we need help. It doesn't have to be a pilot or anything. But also just, 
I mean, offering to take water down, take things down, uh, help out in any way you can. There's just a ton of people there who's going to need. They're going to need a lot of help. We'll know tomorrow or the next day, as we're talking about this on Sunday, uh, what the devastation was and what's get an idea what's needed. The logistics are going to be tougher than Texas because you're going to have a big area trying to go north to south. They're going through areas that are already harmed and damaged. To try to get down to the Key West is just going to be tough. Mm. Right. Well, and I would say, I mean, I know that there's phone banks and everything going on, but, you know, your American Red Cross and mm-hmm. all of those South places. Asian Army. Yep. Just yep. give what you can. This yep. is the time. D- don't get hung up on the politics of the thing. Just help out. Even if you got 10 bucks, you can throw at it. Uh, that helps. That's right. And, you know, uh, once again, reminder, we're the good guys and gals. We're the ones that take care of each other. So that's that's just what we do. That's who we are. So, hey, guys, thank you so much. Uh, this has been uh, a lovely departure from reality to be with you. Well, thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll bill you. <laughs> Jim's because, on that. Because, because there's nothing real about you people. I just got to tell you that. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> oh, well, take care, Tom, in your travels. Bless you for Absolutely. doing Absolutely. And uh, make, make sure Tom orders that uh, revolver. You know, you know he wants it. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> They're nice. We've had they them. They are. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's... Uh, like I say, I'm liking my Smith, but I am definitely going to get that uh, Ruger in the 44 Special. I really want that one, too. You gun people are nuts. And what's your point? And I have no nothing to come back with on that. Yes, we are. We, we like them. All right, buddy. Travel safely. All right. You guys be careful. Do it next week. Yep. Well, that wraps up another Gun Talk After Show. But if you want even more gun-related stuff, don't forget to check out Gun Dealio. It's the app for Apple and Android phones that connects you to all the Gun Talk shows, plus even more. And we'll catch you next time for the Gun Talk After Show. Yeah.